Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, good. <gasps> oh, and we are live. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome back to another exciting episode of D.I. Rye with me, Rye Lasella, and I am joined today by a very special guest. Soraya Cordova. Oh, and actually, let me get set of the way. Yes. All right. Just have a head in there. Zoraida, who are you? My name is Zoraida Cordova. I'm the author of Labyrinth Lost, the Brooklyn Bruja series, which is the same series. Uh, a book called Incendiary, which just came out, Star Wars, A Crash of Fate, a bunch of romance novels, and most recently, The Way to Real Luna, which is a middle grade novel featuring a, a bunch of kids and a jackalope. I love that there's a, oh, that, I was going to say, that's not the jackalope. No, yeah, that's not the <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, jackalope's on the back cover. Yeah. Oh, fun. Uh, and these, so these are some of my other books. I write fantasy predominantly, but also contemporary romance. Let's get these propped up right here. So, we need to know. Reeluna is middle grade, right? Mm hmm Okay, all right. It's middle grade. It's my first middle grade. I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. And I have the same publisher. I'm at Scholastic with Clarabelle. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 And you and I share a publisher for these books for the Brooklyn Bruja series, source books. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Reverie out with source books is also the same publisher as these. I'll pop these up as well. So you guys can see. All so right. What are we doing today? So today we are. So today, so I was taking a little stroll and I tripped and fell um, into an open grave. Okay. And as compensation, the cemetery gave me the skull. Um, and actually, because nothing is fun by yourself, they gave us two skulls. So I thought today would be a fun, and actually, you know what? I'm taking credit for this, like I thought of it. You thought it'd be a fun task to paint skulls. Yeah. Should we just <laughs> cover this in paper? No, it's okay. As you can tell, I've actually okay. this up a few different times. Okay, I'm worried to like, I feel like every time I was allowed to do crafts at home, I had to cover everything in newspaper. Mm -hmm. So that I wouldn't dirty my mom's stuff. We can actually, you know, <laughs> we, can do, we can use, the, I have a papier mache. Um, I don't know what I want to do. So I've been thinking about this. So Zarda mailed me um, our beautiful skulls. skulls. Can I tell the jokes? Yeah, I was going to say, I can never say the jokes. <laughs> um, okay, also, let me see. Yeah, it is not that cool. Um, I have like two followers on YouTube, so most of this is for this is a recording for later. Yes, for later. Years, yeah. <laughs> um, I got this package and it says phone jokes. <laughs> what did the skeleton want for dinner? Spare ribs. <laughs> I, I didn't know you were gonna answer. <laughs> All right, that's good. Okay. That's disgusting as well. <laughs> All right, and the other one. Let me see. This is on like the package. I wrote it on the styrofoam. Oh, yeah. The styrofoam. Um, how does the skeleton make a phone call? With a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> this is okay. I'm done <laughs> with the period. Oh my god, a cell phone really got me. Phone. I thought that that was like the the bee's knees of jokes when I opened it up. Yeah. Um, That's what you get when you're friends with me. It's look. It's been, getting you to mail me craft supplies is like a. <laughs> do you know that that's like that's like a hallmark, uh, not a hallmark. That's like a milestone of like career success for me. That like people are mailing me arts and craft supplies. Good. All right. Glad. Um. So today, just if anyone out there is also crafting it, we'll move these down. For now, we'll be back up. These are very smooth. They are really smooth. Smooth skulls. So we have a bunch of different stuff that we'll be using. Um, we've got my typical paint brushes. Um, we have an assortment of craft paints. Nothing fancy. I didn't buy anything for this. It's just all stuff that I had on hand. Yeah. Um, this is where I provided the skulls. Thank you. Um, I'm you sorry, the cemetery provided, you provided the cemetery. <laughs> the cemetery. You provided my Moscow mule. Yeah, yeah, and our nice crystal goblets. And, mm. Oh, hello, we have a fan. Um, if people have questions, you can let us know. I can very barely read the screen from here, but I can pull it closer if you need to. Just look real close. Um, and also, I thought it'd be fun. I also brought some gemstones. Yes, and that would be great. Some um, Duco cement. We have some hot glue as well. So there's okay. plenty of stuff to use to, to kind of gussy these up as needed. But do you know what you're going to do for... I'm just going to wing it. Your design? Okay. I like, um, I look, I, I wing most Did you look anything up? Like, no, I, I purposely didn't. Yeah, 
Um, so when I in, when I released Labyrinth Lost, uh, there's a big death theme, the witches, uh, brujas, you know. And your mother's cover. <laughs> and it had it had originally a sugar skull on it. So what I did is I did a giveaway where I painted a skull and I I just sent it to, to a winner. <laughs> How'd you, yes. To and the um and so I, I my goal was to do this two more times, but I got lazy. Yeah. And I've had these for four years in my oh house. Oh my god. So these are so okay. <laughs> and now it's a good excuse to use them because I love crafting things and I feel like I haven't been creative at all during this coronavirus time. See, I've I've had the opposite reaction where Finally, I have time to like be indoors and like the excuse to like turn on plans and stuff. Like I, I, <laughs> the second there was a pandemic, I immediately canceled all of my plans. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people didn't in New York. A lot of people were like, no, like I'm ignoring it. You were the last person I hung out with. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah it was like we a went moment to that, Yeah. We went to this bar behind a Chinese restaurant. With, um. Speakeasy. We were with Angeline and, and Victoria, Victoria and mm. just the four of us. I remember another man. <laughs> no, it was just us. Okay. Um. No, but I remember that, and I remember thinking, like, even then, waiter. Like, <laughs> love them. Um. No, but I remember being like, "Oh, like this is dicey." Yeah, and even you were then. like, "I'll just have one more drink, and then three drinks later." <laughs> Well, that was a cool, say for one drink. That was a cool place because they like they they gave us like drinks that like smoked. It was that yeah. it was a smoky. Yeah, it was thing. a drink where he lifted a he lifted a dome and a it dome. just it was smoking. Anything that served in like a bell jar, yeah, was pretty cool by me. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay, you had mentioned someone did like a night theme. I think I might do like a um. Oh, you know what? We don't have green. That's the one color we don't have. Just in terms of your creative process, you, you can make it. What do you we mean? Could, we could make green. Yeah, we could yeah, make, we could make green. Yeah. I was thinking of doing like a um like a nature nature vibe, like flowers and things like okay. that. Um or I was thinking of you had mentioned like a night sky. Uh-huh. Which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. So maybe I'll, maybe I could do that. What about what are, what are you thinking? Are we doing the same one? No. Okay. Well, we could. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to react like that. That was a very <laughs> strong reaction. Um I I mean, we could if you'd like to. If you'd like, I could instruct us on. Okay, because it could be like you know, like those those nights where you paint, like the wine paint nights, where mm. everybody uses one image mm -hmm. and everyone paints the same image, except for like one like really drunk lady who like paints a stick figure. Should we paint the cover? Oh. The Rio Luna. <laughs> We could do like nature, like clouds. <laughs> so like, suddenly nature doesn't sound so bad. And it has a nice sky on the cover too. Okay. We can interpret the cover. Let's interpret the cover. Our interpretations of the okay, so we're gonna do um the way to Rio Luna uh in an interpretation of this cover. Okay, yeah, I see I, I like the, the night sky. Yeah. I see all right, so loosely inspired by Ooh, loose, loosely, very loosely. <laughs> loosely. Very loosely. All right. Um, you can use this as your painter's palette. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do... Okay. So, if I'm looking... If I'm going to break this down into a design, I'm going to be looking at the colors first and foremost in the major shapes. So I see some blue here and some clouds. So I think I'm going to do that for... I'm going to do that for the forehead. I think so. I'm trying to visualize... <laughs> I'm just gonna paint happy little trees on the side, but I don't want to make it look like it's a balding man. Yeah, the trees might do that. Uh huh. Yeah, um, it's fine. I'll figure it out. Yeah, I think we should just go for it. Let's do it. We should shake these first. Oh. Okay. Oh. Uh. Wow, well, already off to a bad start. <laughs> Use your Moscow meal straw. No, it's too thick. These straw supplies are absolutely ancient, so <laughs> that might be part of it. This might... You have a needle? Yeah. Hold on, no, no, no. It's coming out. It's coming out. There There she is. Oh, lots of her. <laughs> this purple set, I'm arriving. So I want, like, white... What are these? Those are um, also paints. Extra paints? Yes, extra paints. You have yeah. green here. There might, okay, yeah, there's some green in there. Yeah. 
Um, oh, so your book is coming out, The Dazzled. Yes. And oh, it's also yeah. a craft theme. Yes. So I forgot that I can talk about this now because it just got announced last week. But I have an arts and crafts book that is coming out <laughs> forever from now called Be Dazzled. And uh, I feel like I've told you about this. Yeah. You and, I, you and I are actual friends that yeah. talk about things. Um, but yeah. So it's been fun to sort of announce that and to sort of see what people's reactions are, but it's a, it's an arts and crafts book. It's about um, two ex-boyfriends who get locked as partners in a competitive arts and crafts competition. Mm -hmm. You're so much farther ahead of me. Oh my God. You're, you're I don't actually boy. know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just feeling it. Like yeah. it's kind of like the only time I get to pant something because I'm a super plotter. I was about to ask you, I was like, is this, in what ways is this similar to your writing process? Um, chaos. That's it. Just, but no, no, no. When I write, I, I plot heavily. You plot heavily? Yeah. But you're also like, are you, would you say that you're fant like you're fantasy minded when yes. it comes to what you write? Yeah. yeah. I always think about what is the fantasy trope? How am I going to subvert it? And those are the two questions that I go in with. Um, how did those factor into Rio Luna? Um, I knew that I wanted to have two kids having an adventure, but I didn't want them to be chosen ones. Interesting. How do you get two kids into? Because it's a it's a other world book, right? No, no. It's it takes place in America. Oh, <laughs> well, America. America. Um, it's so it's not exactly other world. It is. Um, they're going. They're trying to get to the other world. The other world okay. is a place called Rio Luna. That's right. Yeah. So it's a boy named Danny Monteverde. Yes, and it's the pitch. he. So he's an orphan. Ogs. Um. And his sister has been missing for two years. He's about to give up on believing in magic. He's like, fuck magic. He doesn't use fuck. But, like, he's like, magic never did anything for me. Um, My sister's still missing. Nobody believes me that she's in real Luna because nobody believes real Luna exists except for me. Um, And he's about to give up on believing in magic when a magic book... Finds him. Finds him. And this magical book um, is filled with keys or pages that become keys. Uh, and they are going to lead him to Rio Luna, but he has to assemble them. Um, and he has to find them. And in order for him to find them, he has to, he teams up with a girl named Glory, who's also an orphan because this is just a bunch of sad kids. Yeah. Um, and who are trying to find a home. And like, that's the. Ah! <gasps> I'm sorry. The <laughs> sabotage has come to sabotage. Oh. I didn't know I was on Project Runway. It's true. The craft version. I'm gonna take her scissors. <laughs> actually, that's the tea. Is that actually this is a crafting competition show? You should know that you're gonna be on it. Um, <laughs> take her scissors and dole them down. Uh huh. Um, so he has to find the keys. Yes, yeah, so he has to find the keys, and he's with Glory and this jackalope. Um, which, if you don't know what a jackalope is, it's like. A rabbit with horns. Do we know where jackalopes come from? Okay, I'm going to tell you a story. When I lived in Montana... I was so they come from Montana. Saved you guys a lot of time. <laughs> Amazing. you, you got to learn to build up the suspense. <laughs> no. So when I lived in Montana, uh, this I we went to this, this like little knick-knack store, and there was a, a mounted rabbit with horns. And I turned to my friend who's from Montana and I was like, what is that? And she was like, it's a jackalope. And she was like, and I was like, where do they live? Can we go see them? How and old she, were you? 18. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm from New York. I'm from the city. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, and she was like, are you joking? And I was like, what do you mean? Uh, no, I'm not joking. I want to see a fucking jackalope in the wild. Uh -huh. Um, and then I found out that jackalopes only live in the imagination of a lot of people in the Midwest or the Northwest. Oh, I didn't realize they were like specific to a. I think that they're specific region. to the states. Um, so that was really cool. They feel, you know what they do? They sort of have like a log cabin mythos about them yeah they're very prairie like very prairie. <laughs> if anyone ever described me as prairie like i would immediately jump into the harlem river like i would be so upset to be to receive that feedback no why 
I don't know. I just like. You're I like, I'm not Sarah Tall and Plain. <laughs> Unless you call me like, <laughs> you're going to call me Laura Ingalls Wilde, or it better be Laura E. <laughs> Laura. Wait, hold on. I got to get this joke up. Laura Ingalls Girl Gone Wild. <laughs> I hate you. Quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I think that's very funny. Um, no, just like, I feel like I've made all of my creative decisions in life trying to get away from ever being seen as like prairie life <laughs> you know like not consciously yeah um but you're also from i'm from connecticut originally connecticut you're yeah, from so the, tobacco fields you're a coastal elite i am a coastal elite i know born and born and bred um, um that said this is kind of great I Do you like it so far yeah that's good right yeah i'm blending i'm trying to blend the purple and blue it looks, it's going well. Okay. So I'm going to turn around, turn this around. So yeah, let's see. see. Let's see some. See my progress. So we're going so far. Is it good? Yeah. I will bedazzle it. If that's a, that's a request for dazzling, I will definitely be you adding have some to. tools. Yeah, it's I your brand. Not. Which funny is because it was also my old brand. Uh, <laughs> done. You know what I wanted so much when I was a kid, but because I was um, poor? Yeah. I can have it. The, is it a bedazzler? Yes. So I didn't learn about these until um, older, but it was like an actual machine that would like bedazzle for you. Yeah. What am I doing like gluing rhinestones to things <laughs> when I could have had a machine that did it for me? Exactly. I can't believe it. I pulled out a varicose vein of paint. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. That's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need more blue. Mm. Okay. I need more blue. We have plenty of blue. Okay. So yeah, so that's sort of where that idea came from. Um, mm -hmm. Originally, I wanted to write a book that was like Peter Pan meets The Da Vinci Code. Whoa, <laughs> I love that. Okay. So it's kind of like, oh, look at all these clues. What's real is, you know, <laughs> I don't want to get too into The Da Vinci Code. Um, because <laughs> I'll, then I'll, do, I'll, I'll, my, be I'll a, do my utmost. A blasphemer. <laughs> um, but it's like, what's real? How do we find, like, follow these paths to a treasure or myth? Um, and that's how Real Luna came about. Originally, you know, the, each page in the book, so the book, the book, Real Luna. the book that the kids are holding on the cover is called The Way to Real Luna. So uh, it's like okay. a book within a book. Yeah. Um, and in each of these stories, there are characters who lived in Real Luna, but now they're guarding the keys to the, the passageway. Uh -huh. Um, and they, Danny finds out the main character. Danny he finds out the each each character's story, mm. and I wrote each of their stories. Um, like there's a character named. Oh, this is all in the book. Yeah, she's oh called God. the Moon Witch, and she, you know, she has a rivalry with the author of The Way to Rio Luna. Um, not a I'm on rivalry. her team. No, I'm <laughs> pick her team. Um. And then there's an angry guinea pig because I'm from Ecuador and in Ecuador we eat guinea pigs. Um, so. <laughs> Is that why it's angry or? He's, yeah, he's angry because he went to Rio Luna. He, he escaped on a shooting star. He wanted an adventure. And then when he came home, all the guinea pigs were dead. Oh my God. Because it had been like a hundred years. <laughs> he was like, by the, when he left Ecuador, the Incas had, were there. Yeah. And then when he came back, it all been uh, killed off by That's the Spaniards, the and what was left was modern civilization. This is a great commentary on colonialism from the point of view of those that are, of you know, pig. subjugated by even like the resource needs of a colonial empire. So there you go. For. S'more. Oh my God! <gasps> Who's working on Hannah? Hannah's a great cosplayer. If you guys um, are looking for some really incredible cosplay, Hannah, I love your Supergirl outfit. I've seen that. Ooh. Um, but. Oh, I had a question for you. So, okay. so okay. So, you wrote a book within a book. You write the book within a book to behoove the plot of the book itself. Like, you needed to like go a certain way, so you sort of like funneled stories into that direction. Or did you, like where did you begin with that? Um, I always saw Real Luna as a fractured fairy world. Yeah. So there are different sections. There's a place called the Forever Gardens where talking animals live, like my jackalope. And he is the he is the jackalope prince. Um, his name is Llewellyn. Llewellyn the, I think he's like Llewellyn the fifth or the 16th. I don't remember. Uh -huh. He would be very mad at me for forgetting. Um, 
He and, definitely looks like a Llewellyn. Yeah. And he actually, like, the name is Welsh, so when he tells it to the kids, they're like, we don't understand it, and then he says it in, like, English, mm. and they're like, okay, I can say that. Um, so there's that. There's his kingdom, which he ran away from. Yeah. Um, there's a place called uh, the Cliffs of Nowhere, where shadows are born, and shadows are kidnapping kids all over the place. Um, because they do the bidding of the Shadow Queen. Um, oh, so nice of you to include me in your book. I know I didn't ask, and you didn't make me ask, which is nice. But um, to have made it no matter what. <laughs> so nice. Uh, so Llewellyn's, actually Llewellyn's from the, forever, no, he's from the Redwoods. And there's a place called the Forever Gardens, where there's a, there's a, uh, 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 the Kohlrabi, a, a, the Kohlrabi King, named, named uh, Ali Oshiro, named after... My friend Mark Oshiro. Oh my god! <laughs> I remember you mentioning this during the during yeah. the watch, actually. Um, and so it just you know, so I I I wanted this to feel like a real fairyland, yeah. and every time I write supple, supplementary material for a book, I want it to feel like it's an extension of the world. Mm -hmm. um, in Labyrinth Lost, I created I love magical texts. For Labyrinth Lost, so their Book of Shadows, but it didn't, it couldn't just be, here's a Book of Shadows, they read from it. Yeah. It had to be, here's a shadow book, um, oops, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a Book of Shadows um, that we're going to learn the actual history of these brujas from. Yeah. Um, and I think that when you create supplementary texts for your fantasy world, they can't just be one or two sentences. They have to feel a little lived in. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean that you have to spend all your time, like, Tolkien created his own languages and his own stuff, but he also had nothing else to do. I'm sorry. But... <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that when it comes to fantasy, I really enjoy the the supplementary the supplementary world building that comes along with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting thing to sort of... Because you're right, like, a lot of times these, like, mythic texts that we use to inform, like, even, like, our reality... They're not necessarily always going to be designed to substantiate everything. Like there's still pockets of mystery in things like based upon like the author or something like that too. So I think in order for it to feel real, it does have to sort of feel a little bit independent from like the story that it's embedded in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I would love to do something like that. So I always I think that's super fun, and I I really enjoy I enjoy that part of the, that part of crafting a world um, because I'm I'm a fantasy writer like yeah you are you're like a hardcore fantasy writer <laughs> and I never used to feel like that because um, I always felt like um, the just the the sexism in, in fantasy is is hard to get over or Grandpa. specifically yeah specifically sci-fi yeah you know but now I'm like I don't care what yeah. anyone thinks which is amazing because you also write in. Star Wars, which is, well, I actually think a lot of people think Star Wars is sci-fi, but it's actually fantasy. Sci-fi is super fantasy. Yeah. Sci-fi is like, oh, no, I need the flux capacitator. Pass me the thingy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like all of these, like, mythical, like, thingy mabob objects uh -huh. that, like, give... Just add ho the word hollow to anything. I, I need a, I need a hollow tram uh, right away. Get me the hollow tram. <laughs> get you the hollow X. Pass me the hollow wrench. That's wrong. I feel like Star Wars story, <laughs> Star Wars story group is gonna be like, Sarita, I'm gonna fact check the conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will say that actually the the sort of inherent like the way that like patriarchy manifests in science fiction and fantasy was the main reason I never got into either Lord of the Rings or Star Wars. Okay. Because the fans of those when I was at least younger, or at least I should say the fans that I was exposed to, because I recognize that the fans are larger groups than probably I knew at the time, were um, men that were really like uh, gatekeeping yeah. with like, what they liked. And, and, um, and even in like the cosplay world, there's tons of rules that go into being able to play like a Star Wars person. Somebody said I love the layered world building. I do. Yeah. Layered world building is important. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, so I felt that because uh, I loved Star Wars as a teenager, mm -hmm. and I never felt like a true Star Wars fan because the boys that like that were like in the sci-fi club uh, were like, Star Wars is not for girls. And I'm like, hello, Princess Aww, Leia. Yeah. Mon Mothma. I'm like, Mon Mothma, motherfucker. But I'm glad that people like you sort of fought through that. Because now I feel like it's a lot more accessible because people like you are in my life that like show the side of the universe that I probably have like written off. 
you know, that I just had, but like, but because I know people that are like writing in it and there are stories that are like popular and like, even like the inclusion of like Ray as a protagonist for like the most recent three movies um, has like kind of felt great. And I have like, I even told you this a little before, like I started rewatching the old movies because yeah. I want to have more context for the newer ones, which I like a lot more. Yeah. You know what really helped me enjoy the prequels? What? The Clone Wars TV show, the animated TV I hear show. It's a, I hear it's amazing. It's so good. And it made me love Anakin Skywalker in a way that is almost painful to watch him kill people in the third, in uh, Revenge of the Sith. When he kills all the children? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. That's really hard. That's a hard thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Annie, don't do that. What color would your lightsaber be? My lightsaber? Uh, I would, okay, I want to say pink. But I kind of want a black lightsaber. But I know kyber crystals don't. I don't think that they work. They like won't. That. Well, would it be like blue, like um, Mace Windu's? No, Mace no, Windu's is purple. purple. Yeah. But you know how like black lights are actually just like a. They look purple. Hmm. Oh, um, someone asked. Um. Oh my god. Hi, cat. Um. Sorry. We should be showing you guys what we're doing. Hi, Clarabel. Hi, guys. So we are for anyone just tuning in. We are painting some skulls that we found at our local morgue and um we are trying our inspiration for the night is um the way to Rio Luna by Sarita Cordova <laughs> so yours truly but that's not it's I did, <laughs> it's not me as it turns out, <laughs> by Sarita Cordova who is our special guest on PI Rising am I your first guest you're my first guest yes. you're my first guest my first live guest well I had big plan the huge the biggest plans to like do more stuff like this, but then with the pandemic, it just didn't feel safe to imperil someone's life because of arts and crafts. But now, it's alright. I live alone. Yeah, you and I are both like shut ins, and so I was like, this is a good enough excuse to get someone over and have some fun. Um, and the fact that you provided the skull—that's really yeah. an incredible. Yeah. I was like, future. can we do skulls? And you were like, is that okay? I did. I did. I was like, I don't think that I could paint a skull. And you were like, I actually, I really appreciate this because it goes to like the conversation. I was like, white guilt and how like it takes precedence in a conversation. Because so I was like, can I even do this? And you were like, Ryan, you can paint anything out of skull. It doesn't have to be it like a sugar skull. It doesn't have to be like a Mexican day of the dead sugar skull. And I was like, oh, right. Yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, basically. So that's, that's a, watch the Clone Wars. It's mm -hmm. a really good, it's mm -hmm. a really good time. The Clone Wars is a fantastic show. I have a short story. There's, um, there's a middle grade retelling of the Clone Wars short stories that's coming up in August and I'm writing a dark side character, which is I'm, the anthology. Yeah, it's an anthology. So there's two yeah. anthologies. There's a middle grade anthology. There's a middle grade anthology. Um, can I have more blue? Mm, yes, absolutely. Um, oh my God, I got you with my brush. I'm yeah. Sorry. yeah. Casualties. Uh, so there's a middle grade anthology. It's called Clone Wars, um, stories of light and dark. And I'm going to be telling a dark side character named Ventress, who's a badass. Ventress is a cool name, too. Um, her name is Asajj Ventress, and she is, um, she was Count Dooku's Sith apprentice, but then he, he was ordered to kill her because she's getting too strong with the dark side, and I was like, typical men. Yeah, good uh, figure. <laughs> His first mistake was taking someone on named Ventress. That's yeah. someone that's going to outpace you immediately. Yeah. You and don't so, have that kind of name. So she nothing. lives, she's, a uh, uh, um... Uh, a night sister, which are these witches that Star Wars has witches. Okay, uh, uh, they're called the the night sisters. Uh, what, what's going on? Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm just trying to get the side of it. Yeah. Um. So they're called the night sisters, and she was one of them. But then Count Dooku shows up and kills all of them. She goes on the run, and she goes to Tatooine. I'm tired. Like people need to stop going to Tatooine. Bad things happen on Tatooine. Um, and. <laughs> She hooks up with this like bounty hunter group because she's like, okay, I've been a Jedi I've been a Sith apprentice. I have been um I've worn corduroy. I've, I've worn, worn corduroy. corduroy. <laughs> I, have, I am a Saj Ventress <laughs> and I have done it all. Chartreuse looks great on me. I don't need I don't know what else I need to do to prove it. So what am I gonna do now? Am I gonna be a common bounty hunter? <laughs> Um, spoiler alert, she does, and it's a really great story. I love writing the whole story. Tune in for next week on DIY. Wait, I know how movie four goes. <laughs> uh, love writing from her point of view, and uh, the anthology comes out in August, so I'm excited. That's so cool. 
Yeah. Is there a lot of rules with writing in that universe, though? Because so it's precious to so many people. You know, no. Interesting. This is the funny part. Um, I've done other IP, intellectual property, and Star Wars is like, just run with it. You just have to get your pitch approved. This is good. This is coming out good. Yeah. Is this good? It might be the Moscow Mule. Like oh, oh, we are. Yeah, so <laughs> Glenville's just here. So uh, we are drinking Moscow Mules, um, and I was telling Zoraida this horrible story about how I was in um, the liquor store, and I asked for this one vodka, and they gave me vodka that was NFL-themed. <sighs> it's a Rangers, New York Rangers vodka. Is that what it is? Yes. It just looks football themed to me. And I'm not with the spirit to tell them that I didn't ha want. Is it hockey? I did not know that. Wait, oh, is it your favorite hockey? So wait, no, 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 no. I don't want to be wrong. Wait, I'll go get it. Is somebody, is the New York Rangers hockey? Somebody answer that. That's. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's, oh my God, you're right. It is. It's the New York Rangers. <laughs> it is. It's NHL. Oh, sorry. Shit. Yeah. So oh, no. they're uh, heterosexual well, Moscow mules. Yeah. They're kind of straight. Straighter than usual. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god. But I didn't I was I didn't have the heart to tell this person that I didn't want to buy something that was sports themed. So I bought it. So I bought it. It's good. Which is like when they say that gay people are like too catty, exhibit A, like I'm so nice. <laughs> and even bought the sports vodka. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're drinking. That's what we're drinking. And we're making skulls. This is this is coming out very abstract, very starry night. I think I think I'm getting who did Starry Night? Van Gogh. Van Gogh. I'm Van Goghing in a direction that um was inspired by Rio Luna, but I think I want to, I want to do more, I'm trying to get more black on this because I want to do that night sky. I'm what, can you tell me, can you tell me a little bit about this cover? What are the components on the cover that are in the story? So the way to Rio Luna, when the kids go searching for uh, a key, like the, the keys that take them to Rio Luna, yeah. they need to find four keys. Um, they take the, so one is in New York, OBS. Um, one is in Ecuador, and so this is technically supposed to be Ecuador, but we don't really have those kinds of trees uh, in the Andes, but it's fine. It's this, fine. Is, this is Ecuador. It's Ecuador. Uh, <laughs> oh. It could be mm. uh, Cotopachi or one of those, like, one of those mountains. Um, they have green screens in Ecuador. <laughs> they could be anything. It could be anything. Uh, then they go to Brazil, and then they go to uh, Ireland. Um... So they go wow. to all these different places. Yeah, they go to the Giants Causeway. Taurus loves oh, the Giants. Cool. Um, and I make up a story about Giants there. Yeah. Um, because there's like a myth about the Giants Causeway that it was like it used to connect Ireland, Scotland, mm -hmm. and then these two giants fought. Yeah. And something like something so like how that. giants fight. They just yeah. <laughs> just, they just do this a lot. And whoever stops loses. <laughs> Yeah, they have to bounce yeah. from the Do you remember the Joe Gladiator? Yes. Like that. It's that. Oh, I spent all of my childhood like wishing, wishing. Me too. I thought that I would have done a great job on um on um uh Legends of the Hidden Temple. Mm -hmm. That show I thought was gonna like I thought that, that I would get on that show and it was gonna like change my life. See that see Gladiator for me was like the show before the real world, before I got older and like found the real world. Yeah, I love the real world as well. I actually grew up thinking that publishing was going to be my gateway into becoming the gay character on the real world. Okay. It didn't. Yeah. yeah. This is this okay, is beautiful. Okay, so this is mine so far. I'm like. I don't so even cool want to. Uh, Cat is about to. <laughs> why? I love. <laughs> Did you guys? You guys? Okay. I thought that I could have done so much better than the kids on Legends of the Hidden Temple because they were always. <laughs> Like, they could never assemble that stupid monkey. Oh. You know, they'd get to the very end, and they'd be like, oh, does the torso go on first? As if anybody starts torso first. It's, maybe some people do, but, like, this golden monkey clearly had three parts to it. Okay. And do you not remember this? No. I oh. remember Zoom. This Come is different. This is, this is different. This is different. <laughs> no. Anyhow. Well, okay. I'm 
This is clearly a vendetta that I have with my past. Yeah. I'm not going to drag the entire story. Woo! I just really wanted to be on the show. I thought that I would do a really good job. Yeah. And uh, but the kids that were on it never did that great. And I always thought that watching it, I would be very well suited for it. Because I was like, I was like an athletic little child, you know? Mm-hmm. I could climb things. And it was like that. It was like American Ninja Warrior, but like temple themed. Yeah, I was not an athletic kid. I wanted to be. I liked sports movies. I so loved nice uh, The Big Green and The Mighty Ducks. I never watched The Mighty Ducks. Oh my God, Joshua Jackson, when he was a thief. He was like, well, he was my age back then, but <laughs> um, so handsome. Mm-hmm. Just all the teen throbs, teen heart throbs mm-hmm. back in the day. Okay, now I need to add another layer to this. Because yeah, what are you going to do with I this think it's, Oh, I almost went like that. No. <laughs> is this, this is yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. So Oof. I have I have done this when I painted. I used to paint. Um, I used to be paint. I used to be crafty. And then I got, like, depressed and then tired. Um, <laughs> and I stopped being crafty. So I, I really appreciate this. I love it's your craft. It's very soothing. I Isn't it good? Yeah. So, yeah. like, okay. So I'll, you were about to start a story, but I'm actually going to just talk instead. Um, the thing that I like about arts and crafts, especially for, like, writer types, is so much of what we do is cognitive. And we actually very rarely see the final product. Because, like, getting to a book like this takes quite literally, like, usually two years or so. And so, like, what I love about crafts is, like, the immediate payoff of transforming something right in front of you. Mm-hmm. And then being able to see, like, oh, like, this is the work of my mind. Like, I created this yeah. and I can hold it. Which you can, like, you never can do really that. do with books. I mean, you can hold a book, but you can't... By the- you can't hold the words individually. You have to reread them. Mm-hmm. And by the time you can hold a book, you're usually working on something else. So there's yeah. not that payoff of, like, I did the work, I put the time in, and now I'm holding this thing. It's yeah. usually, like, I did the work, I put the time in, and a year and a half later, someone mails me a copy. And, like, that to me is, like, so un... Like, that's just... It's, um... Mm. What is that? Like, fulfillment? Like, instant gratification? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that? Right. Yeah, arts and crafts is instant gratification. It's, like, right away I can see my impact on, like, reality through... Or your reality? My reality through through arts and crafts. Um, okay. I don't know what to do next. You have to do something. This is just... This is a shame. <laughs> this is a shame. It's beautiful. It's like ombre. It is. It is nice. It is nice, even coverage. Yeah. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll do a crown of stars. What are people suggesting? Let's see. Oh yeah. If you guys have ideas, I took Zoom's motto of turn off your TV. Literally missed out to actually do crown. <laughs> um, we're not really teaching any of this. <laughs> this is. This is. We're just going to go into town. The nice thing about this craft is that you just need a few paints, a few paint brushes, and um, a Moscow mule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Oh, that's nice. The yellow? The yellow is, is striking. Good. Is that a moon? Yeah, I'm going to do a moon. Ooh. I need a skinnier brush. Ooh. Okay, there's definitely a few options. This is the skinniest brush, if you want it. I don't think Ryan knows what Zoom is. I know what Zoom is. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You're right. I know. I thought that... I Are thought... you too young? Uh, I'm 29, so I think Zoom was on yeah. when I was when I was around. The thing about my childhood is I actually did not watch a ton of TV because we didn't have a TV. Were you a Mormon? No, we were like an NPR household, like a lot of, like NPR and like playing with rocks, like a lot of <laughs> a lot of rocks, a lot of arts and crafts. Actually, um, my mom's house had a TV, okay. but it was limited. But at my father's house, we just did not own a TV. He actually just got a TV for the first time last weekend. Um, what? I know. This last weekend? This last weekend, yeah. Now he has a TV. Is that when you went to that place with the giant pool? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not my father's house. That's my um, cousin Anthony's house. He has this, like, giant haunted mansion. Uh, yeah, that place looks haunted. It looks like one of those, like, Connecticut places where it's, like, the fall of the House of Usher. Yeah, it's, um, the haunting at Hill House. It's, like, basically... Oh, I actually don't know what that is. <laughs> the fall of the House of Usher? What is that? It's an Edgar Allan Poe short story. Oh, okay. It's very tragic. That makes sense. Paul had a lot of feelings. Um, I'm there, like something fun happens. So, like recently, I was there and I was like, "No, please, please God, show me a sign." And okay. then I went to that abandoned pool, and in the pool was that giant black snake. Yes. It was a gigantic black snake. Was it the book snake that is on all the? Yes, books? It, it looked just like it. I, it was so perfect of a black snake that I thought it was fake at first. I was like, "Oh, ha ha!" Someone threw like a fake snake into the pool, but then it started slithering, and then we had to get it out of the pool and it yeah. was it was an actual snake i was shocked by this oh my god that sounds amazing yeah i look going there um jeez 
Okay, so, I'm trying to draw this moon real. Yeah, let's see. while she focuses on that. Oh, Clarabelle streams it all this year. I love Clarabelle's stream. Weekly on Thursdays. Um, oh, video games. Is that what she's doing? Yeah, so Clarabelle started a streaming channel and she streams oh, yeah. the, the Sims on. I've learned all about this, so I went to one of them and um, they're on Thursdays. Um, and in it, Basically, so have you played The Sims before? I ha so I haven't either. But basically you create a person and um, like, I guess like basically the game is like you live as this person, but there are rules and like you have to find shelter and food. And she kept on making her character eat rotten French fries um, and her character would smell bad. So she had to wash her hands like 30 times. And <laughs> Blair, like, you're, I don't know. Blair, how you're a slumlord. <laughs> No, it's, I do not explain it. Um, it's, it's on Thursdays. And Clarabelle has a um, person that she controls. She's like God and she controls this person named Clarinet. Yeah. Clarinet Orca. That's, that's her altar. <laughs> I, yeah, which I love. Oh. It's good. I'm, I'm afraid of doing stars. Yours. Because what if I mess up? Then you paint over it. Okay, okay. Thanks, Dad. You can't mess up arts and crafts. No one asked you for them. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one wants this. Nobody wants this, except for me. Yeah. Maybe I'll do a giveaway. That's what I That's what I was going to do with my... So I bedazzled a little, like, egg thing recently, and I was going to do a giveaway, but then I started using it to put my keys in. Okay. So now I have, like, a little bedazzled egg holder for my keys. Nice. Yeah. But this I don't think I'll be too fond of by the end. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty rough. I think it's um the hockey the hockey <laughs> hockey community. It looks like camouflage. Oh, it's like yeah, it's like fun like sky blue camouflage. Like if you're like if you're in, if you're in the army and if you're coming from the sky. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're in like a Justin Timberlake video from nineteen ninety nine. Good year to be Justin Timberlake. Good the last good year. I never got it with Justin Timberlake. I, just, I never felt. I never felt that. I never felt that. No, I was more of a JC she says mm -hmm. uh, girl. Yeah, uh, is that one of the other ones? Yeah, it's the one with the dark hair that was handsome. The other one, like the the best of the singers, but uh, Nina is Nina Moreno here. She's, yeah, she's, she's a Mi she's ago. a Miami. Uh, Miami girl, so she should know the Miami boy band history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get her back here. She needs Get to speak on here. it. I, so I did not know much about um, what is it? The Men in Black? Backstreet Boys? Boys to the back? <laughs> What's... <gasps> <laughs> All right, wait, who am I thinking of? I'm gonna fix this one. Backstreet Boys? And what's the other one? And Sync. <laughs> Isn't, no, Boys to Men is a thing, right? Yes, Boys to Men, it's over there. Oh, okay. Um, so growing up, I did not have like a ton of knowledge about those things. Cause I didn't listen to like the radio. Or, again, like we didn't have a TV. So like MTV was completely missing. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to learn about that all at once. and I. I I like know I don't I couldn't tell you who's in what group but I could point I could like identify them as like yeah. boy band I used to collect um I was a very 90s kid I used to collect the Spice Girl lollipop stickers um yeah there, there was, were lollipop stickers there were lollipop stickers that's cool it was, Wait, really was it a sticker or a lollipop it was a lollipop and then the sh the wrapper was a sticker oh okay it was very cool okay so what should I do with the black um, Should I do like spider webs or like tree branches? Ooh, tree branches coming up from the occipital lobe. That's Is right. That the back? Yeah. <laughs> That's why you black out when someone hits you on the back of your head because your eye, your eyesight comes from the back of your mind. Okay. Back of your mind. Oh my god, my neuroscience degree is in tatters. I'm so glad you're a writer and not, <laughs> and not, and not inside not someone's brain. Can you imagine? Howie I'm... from BSB is literally a realtor in Orlando. Oh my God. I want to go buy a house from him and be like, bro. Nina came through with the details. Nina, we called and you answered. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for heating the call. Thank you for heating the call, Nina. It is the hero's journey call mm -hmm. with her Backstreet Boys. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was that was my life as a as a as a youth. I listen to a lot of opera, a lot of Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> different than opera. <laughs> I did. I um I in college, my friends used to make fun of me because I got confused between the Spice Girls and the Cheetah Girls. Oh, is that sad? That is Isn't sad. That so sad to be so sheltered. Yeah, I know. What are the what's what is like a formative movie to you? Um, Splash with Daryl Hannah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good movie, right? Good movie. I thought so. Do you remember The Shape of Water? I always felt like The Shape of Water was just Splash, but like gender bent. Yeah, kind yes, kind of, but like it's the same thing of like mer creature gets abducted into a facility. And like one of the people there takes a shine. What would you rather? Oh, okay, yeah, take a shine to it. Takes yeah. a shine to it, and then like breaks it out. It's like the same. Would you rather be a mermaid or a reverse mermaid, or mer dude, or mer hockey player? <laughs> like like a like Ryan on top, hockey player on the bottom, <laughs> just like pads. I think I'd want to be right. Ryan. Cool. <laughs> <You're laughs> on the bottom. I think it'd be great to be on ice skate at all times. <laughs> just like hobbling about. Basically, hockey players are in heels, if you think about it. That's true. Yeah. They have a good balance. They have good balance. They should be able to do the runway stretch. Um, I would want to be person on top, more person on bottom. Okay. I think that'd be nice. Um, and I like the fins. I was obsessed with merman when I was... Um, when I was little, mermaids, but mermen by extension, more people, more folks, more folk. Um, and I, you know, I also really liked selfies. I thought okay. that those were like the coolest things. In the I world. thought selfies were weird because I was like, where did their skin go? They take the skin off. Yeah. Well, there's okay. So I, I've always wanted to like find this book, but one of my favorite books as a kid, um, that was not about the Little Mermaid, was about like a selfie who took her skin off and became a woman, and then a man stole her skin. Yeah. Her, seal, her seal skin and like kidnapped her and she had a child and her child was like gee god mom's sad all the time um go back she, to <laughs> yeah and the child like figures it out like gets her her skin back and she like i think the point of the story was that like does the mother abandon her child and like she does like she did at the end of the story but the child understood that like it's because she needs to go back to like be with her sisters or something and this is like now my brain interpreting this memory mm-hmm. but i would like to go back and sort of find it um Find it again. So if anyone knows what that book is, let me know. Because I'd be fascinated to read it now. I kind of want to do stars too. I'm going to do, I'm going to do. So, okay. On the cover, we have, these stars are like purple. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do like a bright pink, I think, for the stars. Selkie. Oh, Song of the Sea. Is that what it was? That's an Irish folk tale and it's a movie. Is that what the is, Song of the Sea is? Um, yeah, it's a movie. It's haunting. Is it haunting? It's like Irish cocoa. <laughs> Irish cocoa. Because it has music and it's animated and it's family. You know. I would watch that. This one's great. It's beautiful. Yeah, you should watch it. I'll bring it to you after the DVD. Oh, actually, I was looking for this coral color. Oh, God, right. don't bring Coco up. That's good. That is, those are some good trees. Can you explain your technique? I squiggly line. Oh. So I find that it helps for me to hold like this and then go upward, uh, go upward for the branches yeah. and down for the thicker branch, the thicker, like. The trunk? <laughs> yes. The trunk of the tree? Yeah. <laughs> all the trunk <laughs> nice okay um so are you are these trees gonna have um leaves on them foliage no foliage? they're gonna be dead mm. can i have some more black paint please yes absolutely soundtrack inspired one of the books i'm working on Ooh. oh wow I, I listen to that soundtrack a lot if you're in the chat and if you're a writer, post what kind of books you're working on because you never know where you could find a friend or a beta reader or a crib partner. Um, I also like to know if I'm talking to other fantasy writers because I feel like they're a certain type of person. Bananas. Um, bananas. Banana, a good banana bill person. I don't, this might have been a mistake. I guess we'll find out. I'm just going to keep going with this and we're going <laughs> to... 
No, I like it. I like it. It's very strange. Yeah. Strange is definitely a word. A word that I would use to describe. This. It's nice though. I think this is nicer. This is nicer than I, I thought this was going to look real bad. I kind of want to do like um, Tim Burton branches, but I don't know if that's what I'm getting. I think you need to do like little forks at the end of them. Okay. You know, they need to be like a little bit denser up top. Okay. Oh, I'm working my way up. You're working your way up. Yeah. So if anyone's wondering, I'm doing, so my goal is, you see these are like little blots. I'm trying to do the stars. You see like the stars on here, on the back of the book. They have sort of this like outer pinkish glow to them and then a white core. So I'm doing the outer pinkish glow now and then I'm gonna go in with white and highlight them in the middle. And I think that's gonna give it the illusion of like glowing. Yeah. I think, we'll see. But I'm going for like a night, it's like a cloudy night sky. Um, Look to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drawing sort of happy little trees. I'm drawing dead little trees. I'm like the anti Bob Ross. Now, is there, are there, oh, here's a question. Are there any skulls in any of your books? And can you remember where? Can you do like a control F on skulls in your books? Uh, yeah. In Brooklyn, in Lake Labyrinth Lost, mm -hmm. when they had the death day, uh, oh, there's Bruja's paint their faces in like a skull. Yeah. Like they don't, there's no color on it. So they're black and white. Right? It's just black and white. Um, so my cover is a lie, but <laughs> it's fine. It's 2016. Um, and then in the, in Bruja Born, they're, they go to a, a, a giant room where there's an altar for the goddess of death. And she has human skulls all over the room. Mm -hmm. So yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I have a vivid memory of that. And now you did you? When does the third one come out? September first. September first. Okay, so that's all turned in and everything, right? Yep, it's all in the bag. Oh my god, how, are you excited? You're yeah, gonna, you're going to complete a trilogy. I know. <gasps> I've already done that before. For for your other persona, for my mermaid, my mermaid. Oh mermaids. yeah, the vicious teeth. Um, um, and also for my romance persona. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's interesting because writing writing a three book arc um, yeah, tell me is a task. That. Yeah, um, I think that I would not recommend it uh, unless you want to spend a long time in a world um, because you have you should do a lot of pre planning, mm -hmm. like know what's at least have an idea of what you want that second book to be, that third book to be. Because once it's set in book one, it's it's set. Like you can't you can't really change it without going through the trouble of of um, altering your world building, retconning it. Yeah. yeah. Did you have all three books in mind when you finished the first one, or how, I, how so much did you know? I didn't know much because my publisher only bought one, and then I yeah. guess we got a little bit of buzz, and they and they decided to buy two more. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, yeah, I have two more ideas. That's fine. Well, there's also two other sisters, too. Yes. Which was... Yeah. You know, it's funny. I found the original draft of Labyrinth Lost, and there were only two sisters. Oh, my God. Who was, uh, who was missing? Uh, Lula was missing. Oh, my God. Really? Actually, She's Alex. Alex was missing. Lula was a com combination of Alex and and Lula, and then I split them apart. Because I was like, they have split person. They're two personalities. This is, two this is a two-person job. What's the youngest one say? Rose. Rose, yeah. Um, I just got a star review for that book. Congratulations. I also got my first good Kirkus review. And I, <laughs> I read it and I was waiting for the bar. For, like the, for the punch. Yeah. I was waiting for it to be like, but this is fine, but then it's terrible. Um, and they never said it. They were like, this is a good You book. deserve it. <laughs> you just, you just, like, this, is, this is good. This is a good book. So I was really happy that came in yesterday mm -hmm. um, and I was really nervous because that book was really stressful to write. I was afraid of finishing it. The third book of Rose. Yeah. Third book of Rose, Wayward Witch. 
Veva de Vich. And, um, and it, cause it was a journey the whole time, you know, like I, I was always late, um, as Clarabelle told me the other day. And, uh, um, you're always late. Yeah. I, I was like, I was like, no, I was like, I was like, Oh, like I'm behind. She's like, yeah, but you're always like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, she, yeah, I, I know she didn't mean like that, but it's just funny. Cause I was like, cause it's true. I am always like that. Oh my God. I, yeah, I always swore to myself that I was never going to be behind. So I was like, once I get a chance to like do my dream, like I'm going to take it so seriously. And you just don't anticipate like how actually difficult it is to like keep doing stuff. And write under pressure. And writing under pressure. Yeah. It's truly horrible. That surprised me. And I couldn't believe that I was taken by surprise by this. Cause I was like, I've anticipated this for so long. Like how could this, how could this shock me? Those are some trees. Okay. You're, are you gonna, are you, are they gonna extend all the way around? Um, or just? I think I'm gonna do the bottoms here. Okay. They look a little like cracks in the skull. They do. Yeah. What are they missing? Little branches at the end. More branches. Like little, like little, like just like a, here, look, look. Okay, do it, you do it. I'm not gonna do it on yours. But like, if, if that's the branch that you need to like, look. Little, little branches. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay, very self. Jeez, I might as well have done this by myself. God. Is anyone else doing arts and crafts while people are watching? Hannah, are you doing any sort of cosplay work while you're, while you're looking? I would love that. That's my dream. I would love people to be crafting with us. That would be so fun. I think you should, next time you give people a heads up and so you all do it at the same I'll time. Do it. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. If I can like tell people what supplies they need. Yeah. Maybe I'll do like a paint night. I'll like teach people how to paint something. Yeah. I'm not a very good painter though. I like, well, I'm sure I could figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> people at painting studios can figure it out. Yeah, like Van Gogh figured it out. Da Vinci. Summoner or Dolly. Those kind of fuckers they had. <laughs> they, you know, they can do it. <laughs> What's to stop me? Um, but I would. I would definitely do that. That's like my dream is that I move into like a small town. And open a studio. You and my cousin Adriana, she, cause she's a potter. Mm. She wants to have a studio and like teach classes. And I'm like, I want you to do that too. I'm basically like gonna. I I just want to like my dream is to make enough money that I support all of my family's like little endeavors. That's really sweet. I love that. I yeah. Don't think anyone in my family is dreaming of that for me, but probably because it already looks like I'm doing my little endeavors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I guess this is. This is uh, your little <gasps> hobby. My little hobby. These don't quite look like dirt. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put rhinestones on this, and that's gonna make there it, you go. That's gonna make it sparkle. Oh, it looks like chicken pox. Stop! Oh, it does look like pimples a little bit. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> don't worry. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna power through. Nothing looks good halfway done. Uh huh. Nothing. <sighs> I hate that. Ew, it does. I hate it now. No. It's okay. It's, it's okay. Good. I had chicken pox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're probably gonna get shingles. Did you know the parents, I learned this about parenting recently, they had like chicken pox parties. Yes. It's this, those, those like. This blew my mind. I couldn't believe this. What are those people called? The anti-vaxxers. Anti-vaxxers. Yeah. They want their kids to be sick. But like if one kid's sick, they'll get all the kids sick. Yeah. But that also, I don't think that's vaccine. Related. I think it's also just like, it's inconvenient to like have to go through a sickness twice. So you might as well get both kids sick at the same time. I guess, but. What if you create a new disease? Oh my god. I think that's how that works. <laughs> like, I'm not Dr. Fauci. Far from him, but <laughs> something tells me. You don't know. You're right. You're right. You're right. Part of not being Dr. Fauci in the situation is that I don't know. Well, it could happen. These don't, these, yeah, these, this is, don't worry. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to put rhinestones on this. <laughs> Wait, Zoraida did what? Zoraida did what? It was cute. Oh. Whatever you did. Yeah, part of the fun of this is we can <laughs> barely read the comments. I also don't have, I haven't worn my glasses in like years. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my eyes are just about to fall out of your skull. <laughs> yeah. And I stare at a computer for like 15 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Not good. 
not good at all. Have you been running recently? No. Uh, oh, it's hard to run in a mask. It's hard to run in a mask. There are too many people in Central Park. Um, I think that if I go running around Sunset, it's probably better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still don't want to risk it. You know, I really miss the gym. I do, too. I do, yeah. too. I've been doing some use on my bars over there. Mm-hmm. I've been doing some home workouts, but... I'm not very dedicated. I sort of need other people to be doing stuff around me. In me order too. For me to stuff. Yeah. I need to feel good about myself. Okay. I get through my workout much quicker when I'm at home, though, because I'm not. That, that looks more tree like. Yeah. Do you think so? They look like little lobster hands. Little lobster hands. <sighs> oh, it's slow to evolving infection. We're getting a biology lesson in the chat. Oh, I also miss the gym. Let's- Caleb Rarick ran four miles in his small. What? That is that is not good. That's not good. I would not support someone running four miles in a basement. That to me sounds like, uh, like a doomsday scenario. I don't know. I guess it's impressive. I guess I should be impressed. All right, so... You gotta do something to the front of it. You need a little. I did. More. I want more little. I know. Things. What about? Okay, I'm gonna do. What if I do stars? Mmm. All around the. Like just little dots. Yeah. I think that'd be nice. Okay. Don't do what I did. I would. I would. <laughs> I would encourage you to avoid what I did. Oh, this is seeping through. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Is this, it water-based paint? Yeah. Okay. And this table's also been covered in paint many times. Nothing I own is craft-proof. I'm going to do a little golden. So I think I'm going to take these golden gemstones. I think these would look nice. And you're welcome to use any gems you want as well. I want to do this all over my face. You can do that as well. That's a, Yeah, you don't have to use them on your arts and crafts. You can put them on your own body. Okay. Gemstones. <laughs> um... Yeah, we have lots of gemstones here. So if you guys want to see, I'm going to try to do this without. This is a variety pack that I got years ago, and it's lasted me a very long time. I still have a lot of crafts stuff from uh, when I did crafts. Yeah. When I was happy. When you were back when you were happy. <laughs> Look, I think that arts and crafts is something that's going to keep me sane for a long time. That's why I'm glad that I wrote a book about arts and crafts, you know? Because yeah. it's one of those things that, like, I keep sort of turning my hobbies into books. Um... And arts and crafts is something that brings me so much joy, so it felt kind of natural to write about a character who likes arts and crafts. And who does that, like, not at a professional level, but, like, at an expert level. Do you feel like you learned anything while you were doing that? Oh, my God, absolutely. So each of, so Bedazzled is about, like, competitive cosplay. Mm -hmm. And one of the cool things about writing a book about a world that you're not, like, exclusively part of, sort of, like, in, like, an industry is that you get to, like, shadow people in it, if you want, I guess. And Mm -hmm. I got to like go on like um, research missions to different cons and go sort of like go backstage with like the competitive cosplayers and interview them about like how they did what they did, how many hours they spent doing it. Like that's what amazing. Tools did you used. talk to any Star Wars people? Yeah. Star Wars people are they intense. Tons of rules. And so that's actually, yeah, the Star Wars people, I found out that like there's actual like regulatory committees that control like who can do what. And if you're wearing something that's like Regulations not the word for it, but like if it, whether or not it's canon, basically. Yeah, it's canon. So they actually email. They they have like a running email with um the publisher, where oh, they're like, oh, cool. "What is the standard thing for these shoes for these generals?" Yeah, because they want to. Yeah, because they want to. They want to make sure that their costumes are like accurate. And yeah, that extends even like if like a Star mm-hmm. Wars like group. There's like regional groups that like go to like hospitals or something like yes, that. Yes, they go. Yeah, they're called. Um, there's the five hundred first, and then there's the rebels. Yeah. 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 It's super cool what they do, and I really appreciate how serious they take accuracy and um, consistency between them, and that's not actually that common. I mean, for the most part, most of the fandoms are pretty arbitrary. Like, there's not a real any... Did you just put it in your drink? Almost. Again. <laughs> again I'm going to drink paint by the end of this night. Oh. Brian LaSalle <laughs> poisons right. <Red. laughs> Brian LaSalle poisons right at Curdle Gong Crap Night. Let's just... Let's just... <laughs> Putting it out Welcome there. to the club. Everyone gets a little poison. Um, but it is impressive that they are able to kind of control something, but something that's for the most part pretty organic. Otherwise, like, you know, dressing up and stuff like that too. So I give them a lot of props. I would not do well in that scenario, in part because I don't. I think, I think those people kind of like adherence to a world. 
That looks good. That looks really good. I'm gonna put. St I'm gonna do stuff around it, like like the stars, like like little lines, like. I think that'd be. I think that'll be cute. Um, but I think I would. I think I'd get a little bit frustrated. Can I have the white, please. Stormtroopers. I think stormtroopers. I know that they're terrible, but um. The shape of them is very attractive. The shape of them. Yeah, like the shape of a stormtrooper is very sexy. To me. Say more about what? What do you mean? Like, like the like the, the helmet? The the body of the stormtrooper. Oh, like that stormtrooper. Yeah. You know why? Because they're not like super defined. They're like a little thick. Yeah, they're they're like puddly. <laughs> they're buff. <laughs> <laughs> they're buff. But they're like, but they're not like, like, I feel like they're solid. Yeah, because they're plastic. <laughs> they look like the Michelin man on a diet. <laughs> no. They do. No. They do. No? No, no, Am I saying no. something wrong? They don't look like that. In my, one of my romance novels, um, the couple has a... a Stormtrooper cosplay? Yeah. <gasps> and she has a Princess Leia cosplay. Oh, aren't they like guards of the Imperial Army? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I guess that is part of a world far, far away. So. A long, long time ago. Well, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a little dicey. It's fine. It's fine. They have fun. It's consensual. Okay, so long as it's consensual, that's what we look for. And it's role play. You know what people it's use? It's role play. People need to have access to these things in order to play out scenarios um, in a safe yeah. way, in a safe and supported way. Okay, so I have put some gemstones on. Look at look at the little glitter. That's kind of nice. That's not bad, right? I just have to kind of cover each of these spots now. This will look. This will look much better. I don't know what I was thinking with these stars. I really thought I was. I thought I was onto something. I was like, this is gonna look amazing, and it didn't. The part of arts and crafts is um, giving up immediately <laughs> and trying something else. What if I do a constellation? That would be accurate. Oh. Like that. Oh, that's cute. I need more yellow. So what else? So Ryan was right. I should have done more stars. There you go. But no, you did you are doing more stars. They look good. Exactly. I'm Oh yeah. I'm Following my right. advice <laughs> and getting credit for it. Is that not the Ryan will sell a story? Um, so what else are you working on right now? Like, what can we expect from you in the future, book-wise? Um, because you always have a lot going on. Yeah, I have the sequel to my book, Incendiary, which, um, it's let's have a revolution, but let's make out also. That's the plot. <laughs> and um, I have I sold a new middle grade to my publisher. That's exciting. So I'll be announcing that in a couple of weeks. It has to do with cryptozoology. <gasps> you finally got to do something with cryptozoology. Yeah. It's ironic that it's the middle grade. I know. <laughs> After all I mean, that. Like my mermaid book counts, I guess. Absolutely, it counts. Um, that I've always wanted to write. <laughs> and can you, can you tell us something about it, or is this not announced? It's not announced, but whatever. Can like, I guess? Yeah. It's about a zombie who falls in love with a werewolf. No. I think I'm right. I think that's why you seem, you seem a little defensive. Oh my god, did I nail it? No. All right. It's a it's um it's a gender bent uh zombie werewolf romance. <laughs> supernatural with um a group of sisters and one brother. And how many zombies? <laughs> There's no zombies. There will be a werewolf, though. Ah, oh, fifty percent right. I know. Um, and they they use they take their father's van, uh, hunting for hunting for creatures. But instead of killing them, they save them. 
So they're not mom. They, they broke from the family lineage, which is of hu uh, monster hunters. But That's instead of cool. hunting to save, um, but then the dad dies and they, they retire and they ride a van called um, the Scourge of Land and Sea. And then they have to hang up their boots into a town, a little town that doesn't understand them. These like wild little monster hunter kids. And they're like looking for adventure um, on YouTube, basically, and like trying to find uh, cases, cases around the country. And then they find one and they have to race across the United States to save this. A like, zombie. I'm going to add a fucking zombie to this book and I'm going to name it Ryan Lasala. No, don't. Oh, I hate zombies. The mummy used to scare the, the Jesus out of me. The Mummy, to me, was the, like, most formative horror movie that I watched. Oh, my like, God. Bit, so. I love Brendan Fraser so much. <laughs> I like Brendan Fraser a lot, too, but that movie scared when me. When he was George of the Jungle, he was, and he was taming those horses, I was like, other than Goliath, I think that that was, like, my sexual awakening. What's Goliath? Goliath from The Gargoyles. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. He was great. You know what? I think he would look great in a stormtrooper outfit. Yes, he would. He has the right body type. Yeah, for it. yeah. I'm... So you want, you like the like top heavy. You know what? Stormtroopers have great thighs as well. A hockey player. A hockey player. Come full circle. I hate it here. This is awful. We have to turn the stream off. I can't laugh when make dogs. Yeah, I'm having a lot of trouble riding this too. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Anything about craft? Does anybody the have craft any of writing. craft questions? Um, the zombie movie? Okay, I'll watch that. Um, oh, I, got fired, I got fired from Kit Cusser Job in eighth grade for making out with my boyfriend during George of the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> in eighth grade, Clara. I didn't even have my first kiss until tenth grade. Oh my god, I'm still waiting. I love that you were at a camp. Um, how do you get past writer's block? Oh, I love this. Okay, so. Writer's block is something that I don't personally have a ton. Oh God, I'm sorry. I have a lot of rhinestones and paint down here. Rhinestones? Rhinestones. Oh, that would have been a good name for a book. <laughs> Shoot. Fuck bedazzled. <laughs> um, so, okay. Writer's block, I think, comes from basically demanding that your mind perform in a certain way when it's not ready to do that. Like, writing is like its own thing, right? And I consider a lot of things writing that are not necessarily the act of writing. So for instance, like if I don't know what I want to do next or something, instead of sitting there and waiting for myself to produce it in a written word format, I'll switch mediums. So I'll do arts and crafts and let myself produce something with my hands or I'll draw or I'll listen to music and just imagine. But I basically free myself from the act of like producing something because I think oftentimes that's what gets in my way um, when I feel writer's block, it's just sort of the anxiety of like not producing something of quality that stops me from producing anything at all. Yeah. Um, and if I switch over to like making something or going for a run or, um, even just like watching a show that I like that kind of calibrates me, oftentimes that unfreezes my imagination in a way that then unfreezes my ability to kind of keep writing. Yeah. Yeah, you have to unlock something. Unlock the power within you. Yeah, it's... Um, I think that I used to do that. My problem is that I've been under constant deadline for so long. Yeah, you're a writer. That I, I'm, I'm burned out and I'm still writing. So it's kind of like running when you've injured your foot. And that's not good. But I can't stop because you I need to get paid. Can't. Yeah. <laughs> um... And I know that that's, you know, it, it's something that I have to work on. I, I have a lot of anxieties about not working because I feel like if I stop, nobody's going to ever want to read a book by me again or something, like it, which is, I know it's not real. Like, I know that that's like. Well, how do you, how do you like power through it? Like you now have had to probably figure out ways to teach yourself to just keep going. Yeah. The way that I power through it is I do things like this. Like I allow myself to have a day off and come and paint with my friend. Um, but also I binge watch 
movies and study them, mm. um, or I binge watch I binge watch TV shows and study them. Mm-hmm. Right, I like that. Um, this is cute, right? Yeah, this is going well. Mm-hmm. Making a mistake was the best mistake. thing I ever done. <laughs> ever done. It's the best mistake. I've ever best made. mistake I've ever made. It, you're so right, though. Allowing yourself to kind of like do other stuff. Like, we're not memoirists. Like, we write fantasy for the most part. Right. But I still contend that, like, a lot of my writing comes out of the riches of just, like, having a life and living it. Yeah. And even if it's just sort of, like, the subconscious act of, like, freeing my mind and allowing myself to, like, focus on other things, like, that oftentimes still helps my mind rest, my imagination rest, and me feel good about, like, cooping myself up in writing again. Yeah. Sometimes your, I just want to do that. Your mind has to rest. Um, and I think that when you don't allow yourself to rest... Yeah. Which is what I've done for so long. Um, yeah, you're like not good at this. So I don't know why you're giving advice on it, but why, why am I giving keep, advice? Keep talking, why don't you? Um, I think that you also have to learn what your limits are, and you have to learn how to yeah. ask for help, which is something I don't do well. Yeah, from who? From your editor or your mm-hmm. agent or your writer friends. Um, I didn't know that it was okay to ask for extensions until. I was like having panic attacks because I couldn't finish a deadline. Yeah. Right. And that's not good. And now for people who are on like sort of the beginning trials of writing, what was the reaction when you asked for an extension? Because I know my answer to this. Go ahead. How long time much do you need? Yes. Yeah. I was amazed by that. (laughs) Yeah. In my head, this is what I imagine. My editor is angry at her table and she's waiting for my book on an empty table and there's nothing on this table except maybe like a gavel that she's gonna hit me with. <laughs> like a because, small guillotine that she's yes. gonna put the food in all she's gonna put, yeah. she's gonna put my hand in this tiny hand gear. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna chop it off. Up. Um, and it's just like, I just think everyone's mad at me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had the same thing where I was like, oh my God, the whole world's gonna stop if I'm not together on this. Like while working full time, like while having like, family stuff going on. And then, as it turns out, the second I asked for an extension, like, people were like, oh, that's totally fine. Like, because they have other stuff going on. Yeah, the world doesn't revolve around us, it turns out. I know. I was, it was very upsetting to find that out, but also a complete relief. Yeah. Because then I got to actually do my work, but... And it helps, because sometimes you just need a break. Like, I needed a break. I've been looking at this book nonstop for weeks. Yeah. Um, it's a book that I really enjoy. It's a sequel to Incendiary. Um, it's very romantic. Um... <sighs> And I really want to build up that that love story. So I want to do a good job. Right. So it's important to kind of have that time and that space and that consideration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think understanding that I don't want certain things to be rushed has been important for me to understand about like my creative process. Because I have realized I've gotten to the point where I can, like if I need to sort of power through, I can. But if I can wait and let myself produce something um, that I'm really happy with, I'll feel so much better about it. Yeah. There was a time when I could do... I could stay up for 24 hours. One time I, I was on deadline uh-huh. for a romance novel and I needed 25,000 words to hit, to hit the end. Uh, I woke up at seven in the morning, went to my Starbucks around the corner. I sat there with a full outline and I went chapter by chapter. Boom, boom. I ordered an entire rotisserie chicken from the Peruvian <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> I bought... Yes. I bought a um, a vape pen. Whoa! Just like that day. Yeah, I bought a va- I bought like a cigarette vape pen. Why? <laughs> Why? Because I needed to be tense. Um, and I ate this whole chicken and smoked the entire vape pen in twenty four hours. <laughs> what? Well, okay. I mean, great. Congratulations! But that, what did it cost? At what cost? My soul. A little, a little piece of me died that day. In my mind, you're not using utensils when you're eating the rotisserie. No, it's just, it's just chicken. It's just chicken. Was this all of the Starbucks? No, I was at home. <laughs> this is a Starbucks. Oh, you went to Starbucks. I went to. So I, I went... started the day at Starbucks, but then after lunchtime, by the time I had to pee, and I was like, I'm not going to pee at Starbucks. <laughs> Um, I, I have a round the like, corner from my house. I thought you were at Starbucks like a baby. And just staring at just... <laughs> Are there any other questions? Don't be like me. <laughs> um, 
Oh my god, hold on. I have to scroll up to see if there's any other questions because we've been talking about this for too long. Um, oh, people are having their own conversation. Good. They're like, I'm fuck sorry, this I'm chicken. So um, yeah, ask us, ask us, oh, what cosplay are, ah, oh, cosplays in my book. Okay, so I will answer this question only in slight details because I want to leave some of it up to the surprise of kind of what the characters invent. But I went for a mix of real, like, real cosplays that I would actually build that are based off of, like, real characters. Um, but then several times characters actually cosplay from canons that I totally made up. Um, and the goal being that I wanted it to be kind of a mix. And I didn't want it to necessarily be apparent to a reader that wasn't, like, part of cons, but I wanted people who were, like, really familiar with cons to be like, oh, yeah. Like, I know the person that's, like, wearing the TARDIS dress. And, like, I know, like, the person that's in, like, a Spider-Man sleeve. Because those are characters that are sort of at every single convention. Um, but my favorite ones in the book are probably um, two competitors in the cosplay competition who cosplay as um, Disney princesses with dresses made out of fast food. Nice. So we have Taco Bella <gasps> and um, Snow White Castle. So they're like ball gowns completely made out of like fast food um, packaging. And, that uh, sounds amazing. And it was very fun to kind of like design those. A lot of it's funny because a lot of the details for the cosplays didn't make it into the final copy. In part because we didn't want to we didn't want to make it like too inscrutable to like people who are like not expert crafters who don't want to read about like six pages of like arts and crafts details. So you didn't want it to be an instructional manual. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And well, the thing is, I did. Like, it took editing to. It took my editor being like, "This is all very interesting, but you're." You know, this is like 20,000 extra words of just like crafting details. Um, wow. For me to be like, oh, you should I have that as a bonus. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. I actually, I could. I, so I just not, because all of the cosplays that I have full like build books for, because I wanted to know how I would build each of these things. Um, so I had to kind of know the materials inside and out, how they would look under like stage lighting, things like that. So a lot of research went in that I didn't end up getting to use. So maybe, yeah, maybe I'll put that together in a in a final extended edition at some point. How you doing? That looks great. It's beautiful. These, these stars came out really good. I'm very impressed. Thank you. I'm very talented. I have some glittering eye sockets. Okay, let me show. Yeah, let's let's see. Oh. Wow, these are good. And show that camera too that we're taping on. Ooh. I keep going with this too. All right, do we have any other questions? Because we gotta turn off the stream. We're going for a little bit. My ex always, ex's, ex boyfriends always go to cons as Spider Man. Um, fast food calls with Rain Cat. Yeah, absolutely. I would love that. Um, does anybody have any final questions for Zoraida or myself tonight before we turn off our stream and complete our skulls? If not, that's quite all right. You guys have been bearing with us for long enough, I'll tell you. They are gorgeous. Vampire comp story. Um, I can't talk oh, about my story. Oh, I should do a right. vampire fang. Ooh, could you? That might look a little bit weird. They look weird. Yeah. Yeah. Any advice for surviving submission? This is like the million like dollar question. Agent submissions. Um, submission, I feel like, is the word used for editorial. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, you've already done all of the amazing hard work and now it's out of your hands. That's a, that's great. Yeah. That's truly the best advice is that like, you don't get to do anything about it. Um, what if I put this here? Yeah, go for it. Why not? Well, does it fell? <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's out of your control. You know, you've written the book and now it's for other people to read and um, and hopefully the person who understands you the best will win. Yeah. Will win your book. And I think that's actually often true. Like the person who fights hardest and who wants it the most, especially for like debuts, because oftentimes it's people taking a chance on, there go the, <laughs> there go the fireworks. Um, it's people taking a chance on somebody because there's no track record. So it's truly based on like, the story itself, or, or so you hope. There are a lot of other factors. That's the other thing. This is sort of a grim assessment, but, like, there's so many other factors that go into, like, submission and, like, what people look for and what they can and cannot acquire that, like, you know, everything's hopeless. 
Yeah. <laughs> Not in like a bad way, but in like a way that like you can't like no matter how ang- anxious you are about something, you can't control it. You cannot control but, it. But uh, I'm having to make like good like good luck, like genuinely good luck. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big deal. Um, take this moment to take your mind off of it, which I know is really hard. But you have to you have to treat yourself because you already did this amazing thing. You finished a book and your agent's going out with it. Yeah. So all you can do now is wait, which is so, so hard and start something new if you can but learn but like part of part of like writing is like is the waiting part mm-hmm. you just gotta get get used to it <laughs> yeah yeah you have a true veteran telling you this is words of wisdom little golden teeth spraying out at you all right thank you all for joining us um again i'm ryan lasala we have zoraida cordova and we have the way to real luna and skulls based on the way to Rio Luna. So let's hold up our skulls one more time okay. for those and let us know what you guys think. Give us a comment. Oh, that came out good. Yours looks amazing. It looks good on camera. It does look good on camera. Yeah, mine looks good mm-hmm. under some lights. I like it. Yeah, amazing. All right. Thank you everyone for joining. Bye. Bye, y'all. Boom.